Hey everyone, I thought I'd hop on late tonight and do a little, uh, little story time, I guess you could call it, although I hate saying story time, but that is exactly what this is. Now, before I get started here, I'm going to show you a little bit about where I was when this happened and why I was out there, what I was looking for. But uh, I'm going to take you through this whole thing and, you know, let's start here. Okay. Well, we'll start here in the swamp in the Fat Catchy Strand. So this is uh, this is satellite view of the Fat Catchy Strand. And just to give you some layout here, uh, this is Naples up here. Um, at the time that this particular incident occurred, um, I was staying over here. And I'll actually show you where I was staying. There's the Walmart. I think I was down here a little bit further. I wasn't down this far. No. Does it matter? <laughs> and and by the way, just stick with me because people are probably going to say, oh my God, you're crazy. But this really did happen. This story I'm going to tell you. I don't know where it is. <gasps> there it is. Yeah. So it all started on about September of uh, 2014 or 2013. Um, I checked into this motel with my dog. And the reason I stayed here is because the other motel or the other places to stay in Naples, if you had a dog, were like really expensive, like one ninety five and two hundred dollars a night. This was fifty bucks a night. So I stayed here and I met these two people who were like alcoholics and they were living in the room next to me and I started filming them uh as they were living here in this motel. And uh ended up staying here for about maybe six weeks, uh, filming their, their story. And that movie is called Margie and Scott. It hasn't been released yet, but, uh, it is coming to Netflix and Amazon. So I will keep you updated on that. There's the, their big motel sign. It's right there. Let me go this way and see if I The tree's in the way. Hold on, maybe we can go up here and look at it. <sighs> oh, well, there we go. There it is. That motel is... That sign is featured very prominently in my... Uh, in my documentary. But, uh... Yeah, that's where I was staying. Anyway, back to... Uh, Back to the story here. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, while I was, uh, I came down here specifically to go hiking. Um, and the Everglades documentary that I put out, um, this week, last week, last week, uh, was um, a lot of the footage, the underwater stuff and everything I shot um, during that time that I was down there. And this here, is this it? Yeah, Monroe Station. This is the Loop Road, which goes off 41. 41 runs from Naples all the way over to... Uh, 
Miami. Right through the swamp. The loop road goes from here and then pops out over here. It's about 26 miles or so. Jake and I, when we were on that hike at night, that was, uh, let me see if I can find it. It should be where the bathroom is. Yeah, right here. So Jake and I were in here uh, hiking in this, uh, on this trail. It's a beautiful hike. Um, you can see it goes all the way back here and then you're, you're done. But in here you're going through waist deep water. Uh, we did not go that far in, but it was a beautiful hike though at night. Anyway, but this is not the area that I want to talk about. I want to talk about up here. Now, I was going out to the Fakahatchee, which is this area here. This right here uh, is called the Squares, but basically it was uh, going to be um, a housing development back in the 70s. Uh, they started selling acre and a half, acre and a quarter plots in this, in this, uh, uh, area here. It's a huge area and they would fly planes over with the people, uh, in the plane and be like, look how beautiful it is. And your home will be like right here where my thing is. And, and, uh, and you know, it, it, uh, it was a scam basically. So it all fell apart, and the city, I'm sorry, the state of Florida uh, has been spending the last 40 years acquiring this land back because it's uh, important habitat for the Florida panther, and it's also important for the Everglades as an ecosystem to um, be healthy and vibrant. So, But this whole area here is gorgeous, beautiful place, but the place that I'm going to tell a story from here is right down here. So this is 29 here, which when you're on 41, you hit Carnstown and then you go up here and you go back, um, you go back here and then you're on Jane's Scenic Drive. And Jane Scenic Drive is, uh, it takes you really deep into the swamp, as you can see. It goes basically from here, up here, and then over to here. And it ends up at the, uh, the east side of the squares. Which, I'm going to zoom in and show you. Uh, the squares are basically just roads that they put through. You can see they have numbers, street numbers, or street names on these uh, things, but a lot of these roads are closed or impassable, and I know for a fact that, wait a minute, where is it, okay, this road here, no, wait a minute, it's not that road, it's this road. You can drive on that to get out of here. If you go up and then go up here, you can cross. There's a bridge over 75, and then you just drive up into uh, whatever this area is here. I forgot what it's called, but it's Everglades Boulevard. Anyway, I'm getting really off track here. I want to get to this story. <laughs> um. So please don't think I'm insane because <laughs> I was going to, I was going to recount this story in the Everglades video, but I did not, I decided to leave it out because, um, myself, I have a hard time, uh, kind of, uh, explaining what happened, but here it goes. So. A friend of mine, 
who is a photographer, and he is from Tampa, told me uh, a place off of Jane Scenic Drive where there were ghost orchids. And I uh, didn't know in September, October, if ghost orchids were even uh, blooming or open or whatever. But I just went back because I wanted to see what the ghost orchids are. Now, the ghost orchids are very hard to find. Um, and the people who do know where they are, they don't tell anyone. So I was... Uh, really quite excited to even see the uh, the roots that they grow out of. Um, I would just see those. So anyway, I'm not going to tell you the exact location of where I was, but I was on uh, Jane Scenic Drive. This here is a, a fire um, main tram. Wow, this, this really changed. No, oh, I guess they take, look at this. Jeez. I can't believe they have a uh, a road view of Jane Scenic Drive. Look at this. Wow. <sighs> this was unexpected. Now, I was here in 2013, 2014. I can't remember which year it was. And... This road was really rough. Um, if you didn't have like a truck, uh, it wasn't recommended you go back on the road. But the last time I was here, they had, uh, what was it about, right? I was like right here. Right here they had a, a cones up and it, it, they basically said the road's closed at night now. And if you want a day pass, it's like five bucks or something to drive back there. So I guess they're trying to, so maybe they're just, they're just, uh, making this road actually, uh, they probably fixed it up because I'll tell you something, it was a rough road. Look at that. Something flew into the camera. Anyway, so let's go up here. Actually, let me pull back and. So, there were two spots. This is kind of close to where the, uh, I can't believe how nice the road looks. They did a lot of work on this road. It, uh, okay, so imagine this, this is all water. Uh, this was, these were taken probably in the dry season. Or this, this, uh, street view was probably taken in the dry season because I don't see much water in the thing. Everything's dry. Um, I do know there's one. That one, um, oh wait a minute, we're turned around here. Come on, there we go. Uh, I know there's a lake or pond over here. Where's that pond at? Is this it right here? Where's that damn bond? Mm. It's right before this sign, or this area right here. Now this, this area right here that I'm showing you, uh, this is where the squares are. They start in here. 
So the squares are all there, and then that little pond, it might be covered up by brush, but usually I don't recall there being brush in front of it. It's so cool you can look at this road on street view of this road. I thought I'd have to pull up pictures, which is why I opened this tab up here. The Fat Catchy Strand tab, because I wanted to show you pictures of the, sort of the terrain. But, uh, I'm not going to have to do that now. Uh, I feel like it's in here. I don't, I don't remember. But anyway, there's some big, big, huge alligators in there. Yeah, I can't find it. It's there somewhere. Anyway, this road's about 11 miles long, and uh, and here's the story. Uh, so, I was uh, I was coming back here to go to the spot where my uh, friend told me there were uh, ghost orchids. And maybe we can show you a ghost orchid real quick. Just, here's one. That's a ghost orchid right there. And you can see they're very beautiful. Uh, and when they bloom and it rains, they sort of bounce up and down. They dance in the rain. The very rare orchids in the, oh, uh, look at the pan. Oh, they're gorgeous. Oh, there's a... See, so people see the panthers on that road all the time. That's why I go back there, because I want to see a panther. <laughs> but, uh... Where was that picture of that alligator at? Someone uh, had a photo here of an alligator that I recognize. And he's... That pond that I was trying to... There he is. This is probably, well, let me turn away a bit. This is probably one of the biggest alligators back there. And he, this is that pond I was telling you about, but he's always in there. And the reason that he is sort of recognizable is because he's got like weird kind of green and blue um, markings on his skin. I don't know why, but he's... Uh, he is enormous, um, and he's right in that pond that's right here. I cannot believe I can't find this pond. I mean, I think, actually, that's probably it right there. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. Anyway, I'm not. Let, let's get to the story, shall we? <laughs> um. So, uh, Margie, who I had been filming, she uh, had come out here with me a few times <clears throat> in her truck, and I always drove, and and we had, you know, really cool time coming out to uh, Fakahatchee, especially at night. Um. And just listening to the sounds of the swamp, and it's it's a wild place after dark. It's re, it's really uh, just incredible. So um, one night we had, uh, and this was before the night of what I refer to as the incident. Um, one night we were. Uh, driving back here, we had, we'd gotten to um, the squares, and we turned around to go back to 29, and as we were right along this drag right here, because uh, it was after the curve, so we're in this drag here somewhere, we had the windows down, and it was probably 1, one o'clock in the morning, I had been filming her, you know, going out in the swamp at night and kind of 
doing the things that she did. You'll you'll see what the when the movie comes out. Uh and we were tired and, and we had the windows down and uh, we're driving along. We're going about, you could only go maybe 10, 15 miles an hour because the road was just nothing but potholes. And uh, when we got to this section here, and it was, if I remember, I had looked it up because it was this, it was this gate right here. So... Okay, there's the sign, back at you strand sign. And then there's that gate. Um and this goes back into it's like a prairie back there. So it was about maybe five hundred yards up this way. Uh we'll just say that's five hundred yards. We're driving along here and we hear a loud blood curdling scream. And it sound it and we're driving when this happened, and as soon as I heard it, I stopped the car or the truck, turned the engine off, and turned the lights off. I'm like, "What the hell was that? I want to hear it again." And Margie rolled her window up. She was terrified, and for somebody who had spent so much time out in the swamp, uh, she definitely looked a little. Uh, um, taken aback so we sat there and we didn't hear anything else but it was it was a loud short scream unlike anything I had heard at that point and, and you have to understand by this point and I had been out to the swamp over the years probably two or three hundred times at least so uh, I, you know, I spent a lot of time out there. I never heard a scream before. Um, it was very odd. Um, so, so we just, uh, we, it didn't happen again. And we left and on the way back, we were talking about it. Marge and Marge said, I, I don't know what that could have been. And I, I said, yeah, what could have, you know, we were like, what could have been a coyote? Could have been, uh, some kind of a bird, but you just get used to all the sounds out there. And uh, when something unusual, like a sound, like, you know, like a scream happens, um, you know, it starts to get your head thinking, like, what, what is that? Um, so anyway, we, we, we left, went back to the motel, to Conti's. And uh, about, I guess it was a week later, my friend in Tampa, the photographer, he um, he told me where I could find these uh, ghost orchids or where the roots were. But neither of us, I think, knew whether they bloom in September. Probably not. Uh, but I just wanted to scout the area out so if when I went back, I could go see them. So I will tell you that the area was like in in this stretch here and you got to go off the road you got to walk into the uh swamp to see the uh the roots so um so i went out and got out here about uh maybe quarter after 8 uh in the evening and I was going to, and you have to understand, I was really excited. Like I wanted to see a ghost orchid. So I thought, you know, well, if there isn't not, if there isn't any, at least if I can kind of see where the roots are or whatever, then I can come back during the season when they would bloom. So what I did was I parked and we're just kind of using this as, as an example, but, um, all of this here uh, was wet. Uh, it was the end of the summer, and um, so all this was flooded. These, this here doesn't really give a. This is dry season uh, in these uh, in these captures here. 
there's no water. Um, so the plan was to hike, um, and it was, is about a half a mile off the road. And, you know, it was very specific. Um, so I was able to, and there were ribbons. So the, the ribbons kind of lead the way to how to get to, uh, this spot. And so I, uh, hiked back, um, in the water, uh, into this jungle, (laughs) which this is basically, you take a machete and you figure out how to get through this. I mean, it's basically what you have to do. And, uh, I walked back, um, and by the time I had gotten back a little ways, uh, I started to, um, hear some splashing. Um, I heard, uh, some very heavy splashing coming from not too far away, maybe like 50 yards away, perhaps maybe a little bit less than that. It's really hard to kind of determine or get your bearings once you leave the road because everything looks the same. Once you go in here, like you can get turned around really easy and then you have no idea how to get back to the road. Um, so it's always good if you're, you know, when you're at your car, you take a compass and just figure out where your car is. And then when you go in, you know, well, if I get lost, you know, kind of how to get back to your car. Um, at least that's how I do it. It's probably the wrong way, but, but, uh, I had a, uh, sort of a half-ass map, so I was okay. But anyway, I start hearing this splashing and it's, uh, something big. And I, I thought, well, it's probably, uh, an alligator, like slipping off a log or something and going into the water. Or it's an alligator that has caught a deer or some kind of animal and it's, you know, but it was, it was like pretty, uh, pretty dramatic, I would say. So at this point it's pretty dark and I'm, I stopped for a moment and I was a little nervous, but I I wasn't like, I wasn't freaking out or anything. Um, so I kept walking and heard something walking on what a first sound like sounded like four legs uh about maybe it, it was a lot closer than the big splash um and it uh i would walk and then it would walk and then when i would stop it would stop too and I started to get kind of like, maybe this, I should come back during the daytime. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I was just like, you know, I probably should come back during the daytime. So, um, I turned around and worked my way back, started working my way back to the road. This is not the spot, by the way. I'm just doing this as an example start moving my way back to the road and uh, whatever the thing was started to walk it turned around as well and started to walk along back towards the road with me but it was I would say I, I it was hard to determine how far away it was. It was probably, I would say, 75 feet maybe, 
something like that. It's hard because it's so thick. I mean, this is like walking in a jungle. It's so thick. You're in the water. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to keep an eye out for snakes. Um, and get my ass, you know, back to the car safely. So, um, I, I stop for a minute and I'm just sitting there listening and I hear what sounds like a low kind of growl, um, coming from some kind of an animal, uh, sounded like a low kind of guttural growling. Um, and it was, uh, it was very strange and I felt, uh, threatened. I, I felt like I was perhaps being, uh, hunted by something. <laughs> I mean, that's just how I felt when I was there. I, f I didn't feel safe. I felt like there's something close to me that's pissed off about, you know, it's an animal of some sort. It's pissed off. I don't have any, you know, I have a machete with me, but I didn't have anything else. Uh, so I just uh, start walking again. And then I got to... Uh, let's say around this air, like this, like this far from the road. And I hear a vehicle, a truck, um, driving on the road. And, but I can't see anything because it's, it, everything is just covered in front of me. You can't see the road. And I'm thinking, well, at least there's somebody back here, but, um, when the truck went by, it kept going. He, st whoever it was in the truck, they stopped at my car. Um, but then they kept going, so they just stopped for like a second. I guess they were just looking to see like if somebody was in there. Um, by the time they had gone off, um, a good ways. And you could still just kind of hear them a little bit. Uh, I hear a sound that is coming from the direction of whatever this animal is. That sounds like a monkey. It sounded like an angry, like, monkey. Like a gorilla. Um, like I was looking up different sounds of, of different primates online after this because I was so stunned by this that I was just kind of like, you know, not sure what to make of it. Uh, and the only thing that I found that was close was like a gorilla, like an angry gorilla. Um, but it wasn't as loud as a gorilla. It was like, it, it sounded like, um, like a, Gorilla that wasn't like a full size gorilla, like half a gorilla almost, but it was, it was, uh, it was disturbing to be honest with you. <laughs> I was at that point, I'm like, that's not a coyote. That's not a mountain lion or a mountain lion, a panther. Um, I don't know what that is. And so I just wanted to get out of there. So, uh, I had a camera with me. It was in my bag. But I wasn't about to stop and take it out and start shooting footage. I just wanted to get out of there. Uh, so what happened was um, I didn't come back the exact way that I went in. So when I, when I started coming back, instead of me going, you know, this way, like say like I walked from here and then I made it up to here. Instead of going back the same way, I... Uh, hit like there was like a clearer patch so I started going this way whatever the thing was that like I'm I'm here the thing was probably here over in this area I start when I hit that patch that was like kind of open let's say it's this I started going this way 
And then the thing that was over here, I could hear it starting to come this way. <laughs> and I really got freaked out. It sounded like, and this was not just like one noise. It was like a constant sort of like, I, mean, I can't, I can't really, I can't really, uh, kind of describe the the noise it was it was frightening um the one thing so anyway uh i i get i'm going this way finally can see the road but i end up on the other side of a a pond between me and the road not a pond, but it was like, there's all water here. And it was like this deep kind of area. And I'm like, oh man. So I start walking this way to go around it. And I finally get onto the road. I didn't want to go through this, the water because it was nighttime and there could be gators in there. I get on the road, okay? So here I am on the road. My car is like here, okay? It's it's a good distance ahead of me. So I start walking on the road. As I'm walking, whatever was in this back here um, was still making noise, but it had slowed down a little bit. Heard some big splashes. So I'm walking, hear some very big splashes. I take out my light and shine it into just sort of a clearing that could, not even a clearing, but it's just like uh, an area where there's not a lot of um, hammock, which is like you can look back into the cypress uh, trees. I can't see anything. And uh, as I'm walking along this road, whatever this thing is starts moving this way. Uh, I could hear it walking. It sounded like something... It sounded like somebody on two feet. And the one thing that that really bothered me was, that freaked me out, was it was shaking trees. I could hear it shaking trees. So as it was walking, it was grabbing onto smaller trees and shaking them. And it would growl and snarl and do all this stuff. And... uh I was scared. <laughs> uh, I full booked it. Uh, got to my car. Didn't even take off my, like, all my, like, you know, the, I had boots on. I, had, I just jumped in the car, shut the door, locked it up, uh, turned my engine on, and I just sat for a second. I rolled the window down, and I'm listening, and, uh, as I'm sitting there and I'm getting ready to drive away, I hear, hey, hey, like that's literally what it sounded like. Like it sounded like a freaking gorilla. Um, it was terrifying. It was scary. I've never had anything like that happen before, especially out here in the fact, Hatchie, I've been out here, I've been out here a hundred times, 200 times. I've never, ever had anything like that happen. By the way, how creepy is this lake? You know, right there, that has got to be an alligator right there. It's just a lake in the middle of the jungle. There's another one here. That. So anyway, uh, I hightailed it out of there and got back to the motel with a started talking to uh, the people that were there. The people were living at that motel, so they'd stay up all night talking on the front porch outside the room and stuff. And uh, one guy said uh, that he had been um, over on 29 by the the canal. So he was somewhere along here. So I, I was 
Well, let's see. After the curve. I was like up here in this in this region where it happened. He was over here fishing in the canal. Um, actually, was he? No. Maybe he was back here. I think he went back here. So he was back here fishing in this canal. And they were they were out here at night, and he said he heard what he thought sounded like a monkey. Um, I am convinced to this day that it was a monkey, that perhaps there was an escaped primate. Uh, if you look up... Um, gosh. If you look up... Uh, let's just look up the... So, um, these, what is this? Skunk ape arm. That's not a, that's not a skunk ape arm. That's a bear. I think that's a bear's arm. Yeah, that looks like bear to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, this photo here. Some lady in up in Mayaka, which I'll show you where that is. But she claimed that a gorilla was going into her backyard at night, an orangutan, and uh, taking oranges out of her tree. And she took this picture of it. And uh, I had remember seeing this picture and the whole time that I was out there in the swamp. And I... <laughs> this is all I thought about. This is what I'm going to see when I get to the road, because whatever it was, I did not want to see it. I was, I was just at the point that this all happened. I was like, I just, I just want to get out of here. Like I was like totally freaking out. Um, but uh, you know, do, do I, do I think that there's a skunk ape? I don't think there is. I think that uh, this may have been some kind of uh, an animal that was either let loose or had escaped and was living out there um, in the uh, in the cypress uh, swamp. Look at those. That is so, fr I mean, now if I saw that, I'd be like, okay, there is a skunk ape. That is ridiculous, whatever that is. What is that? This is supposed to be a real. Oh, this is supposed to be a real picture. That's absurd. Anyway, uh. I like this font like a rave postcard um so anyway that's my story um oh and Mayaka by the way is up here by here it is right here I'm gonna say I can always find it because Sarasota Sarasota is right here and the Mayaka Park. They always say there's like, you know, skunk apes in here and stuff. But I, I just don't believe in the skunk ape. I don't think it's a real thing. But uh, I think what I heard was an animal. But I don't think it was a skunk ape. I think it was perhaps a uh, some kind of a primate. Um, That's the only thing I could think of. Now, I've been out here since then. haven't heard anything. So... I tried to go back here with Jake when we were down filming the uh, the Everglades video, and uh, the road was flooded, so you you couldn't even go back there. We tried to access it from from here, from the squares going down Everglades Boulevard, and 
and then heading over to see if we could get back here. But uh, it was no dice. Uh, and if you're looking for Florida Panthers, this is a good... The the uh, the Picayune Strand is a great place to go. Uh, just drive down this road here at night. And keep your eyes peeled. And you might see a panther. It's a good place to look. This is also a good place to look. Um, and then, of course, there's the... Where is it? Oh, yeah, here's the Florida Panther uh, National Wildlife Refuge, which um, I don't even know if you can... I don't even know if you can access this park. Uh, well, these are dirt roads. You could drive back there, but I don't think I don't think you're able to drive through here. Hmm. Anyway, that's my story. Call me crazy, <laughs> but uh, I have no way to explain what it was. I don't. I don't have any other explanation other than that was uh, some kind of a primate or monkey that was in the swamp. Uh, very strange indeed, but uh, I don't know. Kind of a creepy story. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, yeah. Let me know if you think there's monkeys in Fakahatchee Strand. Anyway, thanks everyone for listening. Signing off.